What's up, everybody? I'm Dave, the Military Millionaire, and today we're going to talk about wholetailing real estate. What is it? How I made $40,000 doing this in March. Also, let me know if you like this setup. I've never actually done like a standing video with the nice like podcast mic like this, but this is literally the lunch break of Veterans REI Live right now, and I've got my lunch sitting over there, but I told myself I couldn't eat it until I recorded the two videos that I'm going to record today. So this is rather than changing the whole setup and plugging into a mic, I just grabbed the setup I did for my presentation on house hacking the VA loan. And I'd like to know if you guys like this setup, because this is really simple. Like, wow. So let me know what you think. And I am excited to talk to you guys today about wholetailing and how it's made me some money. So let's dig in. All right, after completing a few wholetail, let's make sure I'm not talking too loud here. Am I too loud? After completing a few wholetail transactions in early 2021, I have come to realize that a lot of people just don't understand what wholetailing real estate is. And that's a shame because I think most markets are perfect right now for selling properties via the wholetail strategy. That's why I've been using it. So if you're in a hot seller's market, this strategy may work very well for you right now. In fact, a lot of house flippers and wholesalers I know have started to use this and incorporate it more and more into their strategies. Now, if you're new to the Military Millionaire community, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that little bell so that you get notified when we push new content. But let's dig into the difference between wholesale and wholesale real estate investing. A lot of you probably know what wholesaling is anyway. So the main difference between wholetailing and wholesaling is ownership. With wholesaling, you never actually take possession of a property. You simply assign a purchase and then and purchase and sale agreement and to a new owner. And then with wholetailing, on the other hand, you actually purchase the home and then you list it on the multiple listing service MLS, whether you've done a little bit of work or not, in order to allow the entire market to bid on the home. Sometimes you will clean these houses out and clean them up a little bit and clean out the trash, slap some paint on it, remove an old shed from the backyard. And then you list it for a premium. Other times, you just buy it and list it if you think there's enough of a market there, right? Like maybe a turnkey property. So my friend and buddy John and partner John, I guess, whatever you want to call John. Uh, you guys have all seen or know of John. Uh, my friend John and I bought a home in late February for $12,000. We then put $2,200 into cleaning out the trash, removing kitchen cabinets, and removing an old shed in the backyard that the city had deemed dangerous. And then we listed it for $35,000 and sold it for the full asking price within 12 hours of going on the market. Even after marketing taxes and a commission to our real estate agent, we came out on top a lot with this strategy. So I think wholetailing makes sense in a buyer's market and in, in buyer's markets and seller's markets alike, but it is very, very competitive in a low inventory seller's market like we're seeing right now because of the pandemic, right? So. What is wholetailing real estate? Wholetailing is when you smash that like button in order to help YouTube recognize that this video is worth a shit. Okay, maybe not, but I'd appreciate it if you did that in return for something that could literally make you tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars um, from the content of this video. Wholetailing is a cross between wholesaling and house flipping. It's where you, it requires a little bit more work than just wholesaling, but the reward often compensates you for it, right? So. Sometimes you don't need to do anything to a home other than purchase it and turn around and list it immediately on the market. That being said, the strategy makes the most sense when you're planning to put a coat of paint on the home or maybe clean out some trash or mow the grass or whatever, right? Like you just kind of want to like lipstick it, like just slightly increase the value of the home and then list it. Now, wholetailing works great because you are taking an ugly house, making it slightly more attractive, and then lead it, letting the hot market make offers on it. The competition in the market can potentially bid the home price higher and higher, increasing your profit more than if you were to simply push it out your email list. Plus, with wholesalers, you know, they're looking for a di difference. There's got a, a deal. There's got to be a lot of margin on it. So for wholetailing, you can sell it full retail to people who will actually occupy the home, vice having to push it out to a small subsect of cash buyers or whatever, right? Now, that's fine. This would work extremely well in a market like San Diego where homes are literally selling for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking price within days of being listed. So, all right, here's how you wholetail real estate. Now, this may seem a little bit redundant, but 
it really is a simple process. And I just want to highlight that so you don't overthink it. First, you spend time and money marketing for off-market deals. Then you negotiate with the seller until you arrive at a price that makes sense. Then you purchase the property, clean up the property, take professional listing photos of the property, list it on the MLS or multiple listing service, and you let buyers fight over it. Yeah, it's really that simple to wholesale real estate. The most important parts of the strategy are knowing what you'll be able to sell the property for, how much money it will take you to clean it out or whatever and list it and sell it and commission and all that other stuff, and then negotiating the price down with the seller. All right, so what are some of the benefits to wholesaling real estate rather than some of these other strategies? I like it for a few reasons, but one of my favorites is that the seller won't see what you're doing at closing. Right, so many sellers have issues with wholesalers because when they realize that you're making a solid chunk of money off their home, they don't appreciate it, which is somewhat understandable. And really, I, wholesaling kind of makes me feel cringy sometimes, depending on how the transaction goes and whatever. Whereas wholesaling, you actually bought the home and then turn around and sell it, so whatever. Now, on top of that, there are a lot of wholesalers out there that give real estate investors a bad name because they might lock up a property and get it under contract with no intention of closing it, right? Like um, if they can find an end buyer, great. But if not, they are more than willing to just break contract. Now, I think that's a terrible business contract. And I recommend that you always intend to close on a property, right? So I have closed every property I've ever put under contract unless the seller, you know, there were issues on the seller side. Now, if you put it under contract, you want to gain a reputation as somebody who can and will close. I promise that's huge. Now, when wholesaling, you buy the property and then you turn around and list it without the seller having any idea that you resold it or how much money you made in the process. Now, sure, they can look it up, but most people aren't going back to homes they already sold to look up if they got listed again. Now, that's the least stressful way to buy and sell a home quickly, and I much prefer wholesaling real estate from a peace of mind, being able to sleep at night standpoint. So should you wholesale real estate in a seller's market? In case you haven't figured it out, yeah, I think a hot seller's market is the perfect place for wholesaling real estate. And it absolutely is a viable strategy right now. I have been doing this. The main reason is that you will most likely receive multiple offers on the home and you may even get buyers to pay more than what you're asking. Now, I would not necessarily retail or recommend wholesaling real estate at the bottom of a market, but when the market is as hot as it is right now, this makes perfect sense. As always, the market will pretty much dictate what strategies make the most sense, but you know, buy and hold is always awesome. That being said, you should only purchase properties like this if you would be okay holding them for the near future. You never know when you might get stuck holding a home, whether because you misjudged what you could sell the property for or because the market may have fallen out from under you. And you definitely don't want to get stuck holding a property that you aren't okay with holding. That's a pretty quick overview of wholesaling but it really is a simple strategy. If you understand wholesaling or house flipping, this should be a really simple one to understand. Now, make sure you subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, and let me know if you like this setup with the mic and how the audio sounds. Have a great day.